Hey everyone, welcome back to Roscoe's Reef. On uh, this video we're going to cover a few topics. One is Orphic and lighting over my tank and the situation that's going on there. Um, another topic is going to be a little bit of a coral spotlight on some corals that are doing really well since the last update. Um, and three, and the last topic is going to be a condition in my tank, basically an algae issue and steps I'm taking to rectify that. Uh, so, first is Orphic. Uh, a short time ago I did a review on the Orphic Ocean Light Fixture. Um, the people over at Orphic reached out to me and asked me if I would like to receive the light and do a review on it. And I was more than happy to do so because after all it was a free light fixture. And, and uh, I, But more importantly, I was already researching Orphic and, and contemplating the, the, what the possibility would be for me to save up the money and purchase the, the fixture itself. So once I received it, uh, shortly after that, the CEO of the company reached out to me and said that the company they had prepare, uh, pro producing the light for them was basically screwing them over and they were going to discontinue the production of the light and pull it in-house and release it at a later date. So this way it met with Orphic's uh, quality and standards. So um, he said to make up for that he was going to send me out a V4 Atlantic um, compact to make up for uh, that problem and uh, if I could do a review for it as well, which again I agreed to. So while it is a free fixture and it was given to me by them to review, uh, I just want you to let you know that all my reviews on anything I do on the channel are 100% my opinions and I will never uh, push an item that I don't agree actually makes an impact on my tank or my corals or my fish. So uh, with that being said, uh, there's going to be some videos coming up reviewing um, the V4 Atlantic Compact and how it's making out over my tank the app and the installation, um, not in that order of course, but uh, just uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so this way you can be alerted for when that video drops. So with that being said, uh, on to some corals. Um, a lot of corals in my tank recently have decided to um, suddenly come through, go through a growth spurt, whether it's just the conditions in the tank and the water are, are just per perfect for them or that the lighting um, has affected the tank in a positive way since again I switched from uh, originally I had black boxes then I went to Ocean Revives and now it's got a higher end light above it so uh, I'm thinking the light does have something to do with it but also in the case of um, things like um, my acros and some of my more um, my SPS corals, I went back to dosing acro power in my tank and um, I had stopped for a little while because obviously um, I had run out, went to my LFS, there wasn't anything available except for uh, another uh, I, another brand and I started dosing that and like us all we will tend to try new things out from time to time to see if they actually work in our tanks. So. Um, after using that product and really not liking the results, I went back to Acro Power and, and I'm back liking the way my corals are looking immediately. Um, you can see the SPS here, uh, this piece is just becoming a very, very stunning piece in, in my tank and I can't wait for that to grow out. Uh, so these, my LPS uh, is under um, an Ocean Revive still. I only have the one V4 Atlantic, which I put primarily over my SPS because it was a higher end light and I, I kind of think that that is also a contributing factor to the growth. I mean uh, I showed on when we moved Ocean uh, out of my tank to go to, to uh, fish a Hexes 300 we had cut a piece of the Barney Coral off and, and now it's already started to heal and skin over that cut zone and you can see just a lot of things have more color in my tank and, and I'm really liking the way it looks. So. Uh, hopefully um, things continue to go well and obviously uh, check out the video that will be coming up soon on the V4 Atlantic. Now uh, a problem I'm having. I think this started 
back when my Calerpa went asexual and just overnight totally melted out of my tank, releasing its nutrients into the water. Primarily on these rocks on the right hand side of my tank, I'm having an algae issue with hair algae. So uh, after doing a series of water changes and, and it really not affecting it that much, uh, I kind of went back to old school when I first set up my first tank and um, was running GFO on it. Now granulopharic oxide or GFO is a component that will take uh, phosphates out of the water and um, this will inhibit the growth of nuisance algae in the tank. So I remember <laughs> way back when I was researching it I watched a uh, video on another channel and they were talking to Mike Paletta and Mike Paletta said that he knew when his GFO was uh, ready to change because the hair algae was, would pop up so it felt okay let me go back to run some GFO now I had a BR, BRS dual reactor on my system and I only needed one so all I had to do was take the top plate off take the uh, Murloc fitting off the one side of the of the container you see here and just put it basically on one container and get the GFO prepped and ready to go. Also since I was running a reactor that I had basically in storage for quite some time I made sure I went over each fitting and also the uh, o-rings and seals and anything that was rubber um, as well to just guarantee that this was not going to leak and wasn't going to cause a big mess which no one wants. The other thing that you got to remember is when you're dealing with Murloc fittings, um, these are fittings that are designed to um, accept the hose that comes with the reactor and lock them in place. Make sure you give them an extra push. By that I mean when you first push the hose into the Murloc fitting, it's going to feel like it's secure, but give it an extra push and you'll find that there's a little bit of a gap that's still left over for that hose to go up into then just give it a, a, a little wiggle and a little pull to make sure that everything's locked in place. When it comes to GFO and how much flow to put in it, um, it's a fine line between too much flow and not enough. Uh, you want to give it enough flow so that this way it doesn't turn into a big brick in the container and basically make the reactor non-functional at all. So to do this uh, I put a ball valve on the um, pump side of the reactor to govern how much flow was going to come in and out of the, of the reactor and in contact with the GFO itself. I could have put the GFO in a, in a bag and put that into the part of the sump where my water uh, comes from my return or my overflow rather uh, but to me I never like doing that because there's no guarantee of how much of the water is coming into contact with the bag and it may take days for the total water volume of your uh, system to come in contact with the media. So that's why choosing a reactor for me was, was always the way to go. This way I'm guaranteed that maybe even several times a day the total water volume in my tank is coming in contact with the media and the media is working properly. So when you first start using GFO, um, what I'm doing here is even though I have a history with this, it's the first time it's going to be running on this system. So just as if it was, if I've never used it before, I chose to use half of the recommended dosage so this way I was guaranteed that this wasn't going to be pulling out way more than I wanted to. For my total water volume, it came out to be like uh, three quarters of a cup of GFO uh, in the reactor. Now also what you want to do when you first put this um, to use is you're going to have to clean it. So I made up a bucket of RO water. I put the pump that's attached to the reactor in the RO water and ran RO water through the GFO to get out all the dusty fines that are in it. This way I'm guaranteed that when I put it on my um, sump, all these fines will not go into my tank and next thing I know I got cloudy water and all dusty GFO floating around my tank. Installing the reactor is pretty much straightforward. I did have a problem with the mat, with the fact that the reactor doesn't touch the bottom of the um, stand, but a old uh, jar that I had from some old two-part served its purpose and it supported it well. Plus the fact that the hoses are long enough to drop 
into my return section, kind of clamp it in place and I don't have any fear of it falling. After doing that, then it's just a matter of plugging the reactor in and dialing the flow to where you need it. Um, this is basically where I like it to sit, where it's tumbling nice and gentle and it will not turn into a big brick of GFO in this reactor. And at the same time, help me beat the hair algae problem that I have going on in the tank right now. That's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, as always, this is Scott. I will see you next time around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.